Hello friends and welcome back. This is Dawn. In today's video, we are going to be creating some Christmas cards. I know it's very hard to create Christmas cards in the middle of summer, but with the sweltering heat that a lot of us are getting, what better way to spend the day than dreaming of cooler temps sitting in your craft room? And this collection from Spellbinders by Yanis Makula, the delightful Christmas collection is, guys, chef's kiss. She's done it again. Yana has been on a roll with creating these full collections that are incredibly well thought out and so easy to use. So when I first got this, I did not have a card in mind to create. I did not watch um, Yana's introduction videos. I just pulled out all of the supplies and started creating. So you're going to see a lot of a lot of creating in this video. I'm just testing out all of the pieces. I pulled out a cohesive color palette and just started playing with each of the items. And in the end, I end up with seven cards and I had to make myself stop. So I could have kept going and had lots of cards from just this one initial session. And this 3D embossing folder here started it all, the Holly and Foliage 3D embossing folder. The detail and the dimension in this folder is incredible. I started with some Spellbinders Royal Amethyst cardstock. I like to mist my cardstock front and back when I run it through. This just helps to um, relieve any cracking that might happen when you're using a cardstock. But that got me to thinking, let's try watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is made from cotton. So I grabbed my Black Legion watercolor paper, sprayed it front and back, and the nice size of this folder Oh, look at this, you guys. Look at that detail. Okay, so the nice size of this folder means that I can put a full five and a half by four and a quarter inch sheet of paper in here and get two card fronts with one pass. But this cotton watercolor paper embosses beautifully. And that got me to thinking, let me try the better press cotton panels because they're 100% cotton as well and they should emboss beautifully. And oh, you guys, this is their pebble it embossed the best. Look at that detail. It is so cr incredibly crisp and clean. And when you flip it over to the back, you can see just how deeply this is embossed. All right, so I did a couple more colors so that I would have some things to choose from when it came time to create. And next I decided to try out the Glimmer Holly background bundle, starting with the Holly background Glimmer hot foil plate. So I went ahead and grabbed a variety pack here from Spellbinders. This is their Christmas Sparkle variety pack. I really like the matte gold in this one. It's just a little bit more uh, deeper gold than the matte gold foil that sold singly, singly, individually. <laughs> Set up my plate here. I love this pattern. You guys, I just gushed over the 3D embossing folder, which is the same pattern here, but this one is going to give us that transfer of that pattern, but in a foil uh, finish. So I've put my plate down, my foil shiny side down, my cardstock, and then I'm gonna put my plates on top of that and push the timer button. When that light stops flashing, it's time to run that through our uh, machine there, but in the meantime, I am going to set up the foil for my next run. So we see here our, our light is solid, so I'm just gonna run that through my Spellbinder 6 and then we get to see the gorgeous results. This is always the fun part, the reveal. It's almost like masking. You know, when you mask things in ink blend and then you remove the mask and it's oh, so satisfying. So you can see here that gorgeous, gorgeous pattern that is transferred, but also slightly impressed into the paper. Absolutely beautiful. All right, so again, I did several of these. You know, because a girl's got to have options. <laughs> no, and honestly, it does help to do several when you're doing your hot foil. Once you've got that hot foil machine out and set up, definitely do several, even if you don't think you're going to use them. You can always store them with your plate and they're ready to go for your next crafty session. Okay, with several background options created here, it was time to move on to creating some focal points with their sentiments. So I pulled out the Joyful Glimmer plate. And this set has two glimmer plates in it. You have the be joyful words, and then you have the floral elements that accent those letters. And you can use these together or separately. And I'll show you both in my card samples today. 
So for this first one, we're gonna we're gonna use both of the plates. I'm gonna start with the floral accents first, and I'll be able to fit my letters in right in between those floral accents after I've done that first round of foiling. And I'm using black foil for this one. This is their opaque black foil. I love this foil. Um, it's great if you like to Copic color your images afterwards. I feel like the black just really makes bright colors pop. So it's something if you haven't checked out the opaque black, I would definitely check that out. So once that is all heated up, I will take that, run that through my Platinum 6, and then we will have these gorgeous little floral elements. Okay, so now it's time to do the Be Joyful, and those are going to line up very easily in between the open spaces of those florals. For this one, I do not want it to shift at all, so I'm gonna use the hinge method here. I'm gonna use my washi tape to tape the die in place on one side. We're gonna flip that back, and then we're gonna lay our foil and flip our die back on top. And it's really important that this does not shift at all, so I'm gonna make sure to hold this in place in at least two spots with some washi tape so that there is no shifting. And then we will just foil as usual. So you end up with this beautiful focal point sentiment that we can now add color to, or we could leave it uncolored. We could foil this in two different colors. Really, it's up to you what you do with it. And again, I'll show you several different samples here at the end. And as usual, if you have any uh, over foiling, you can just use your mono sand eraser to get rid of that. Now off screen, just like before, I went ahead and created several different versions that I can now use and put together with any of those backgrounds that I created. So if I wanted super simple, elegant cards, I could simply layer these. And there are so many possibilities just with what we have created so far. But I wasn't done playing yet and we have a couple more things to uh, look at and you are going to love the cards that we end up with, I promise. So let's keep going. And true to my word, like I said, once you've got that glimmer machine out and you're in the foiling zone, go ahead and maximize that time. So I pulled out the A Merry Little Christmas Sentiment set, which is also part of this collection. You have five large sentiments here with coordinating dies, and then you have four sub sentiments. So I went ahead and hot foiled a bunch of those as well. Now this gave me a pretty good stash of elements to start pulling my cards together with. I knew I had enough to at least, if not finish multiple cards, to get a good start. Okay, so for the first card, I wanna use that Glimmer Holly background bundle. So I've taken this gold hot foiled background. This is on 80 pound Nina Super Smooth cardstock and we're gonna use the coordinating stencil here. Now you can buy this in the bundle or you can buy them separately. I will say I think it's about four or $5 cheaper to get the bundle and you guys are gonna love how easy it is to add color to this background using the stencil. So it has four layers. You've got the berries and then three sets of leaves. I'm gonna be using the Rabbit Hole Bitty Blender brushes. I always mess that up. Rabbit Hole Bitty Blender brushes. And Concord and Ninth inks here to do my ink blending. I'm gonna start with the Buttercup, and I'm just gonna put a very light layer of this Buttercup over all of my berries. This is gonna act as my highlight, and it's also gonna give me a warmer red in the final result. And I've sped this up quite a bit because um, we're ink blending here. Ink blending can take a minute, even though these are small areas, um, I tend to I tend to do more than is necessary. <laughs> you could come in and fill these with solid color, but I do like to have a little bit of variation in my colors, even when it's ink blending. Now, the neat thing about these stencils is that the way Yana designed these, they don't, they don't completely fill every single area of each element. It has more of a stylized artistic look and I'm, I'm really here for it. I love that whole perfectly imperfect look. So this to me is um, a lot of fun and, and a little bit different than the other stuff that's on the market right now. So for the holly leaves, I started off with a little bit of Concord and Ninth's Evergreen. I concentrated it at the center areas where the holly is tucked behind the berry. I let it fade out. And then I came over that with a little bit of Peacock just to give it a blue green. Now for these larger leaves, I'm using the Concord and Ninth Sprout. And I, I, I'm again concentrating the color heaviest toward the stem blending it out, and now I'm coming in from the tips of the leaves inward with Aqua Sky to give me a nice blue-green blend on those leaves. And then for the last layer of foliage here, I'm gonna use the Dove from Concord and Ninth. This is a beautiful light gray color, and I just 
I think that it works beautifully with the rest of the colors. I didn't want to add another green in here. So the gray is a nice neutral that makes the other colors pop. And then I wanted to try something a little bit different. I wanted to incorporate some of my older supplies in with this set and see if I could make it work. So I used just the Be Joyful and then I used some Garden Builder dies here from the Country Road collection from Spellbinders to die cut a couple of little floral elements that I thought complemented the elements that were in this background. And I love the way this turned out. And it's just another way that you can stretch this particular supply and incorporate some of your stash in with it and bring some new life to those supplies as well. So I die cut a couple of the elements here from greens, reds, and then of course some matte gold, not matte. This is the mirror gold uh, cardstock. I just thought that that would accent the gold foil perfectly. So I created a couple little floral arrangements and then I'm going to accent each of the letters with a floral arrangement. And I used the glimmer plate with the floral elements on it as kind of a guide. Um, obviously mine are different and they're larger. But again, I used that as kind of a reference or some inspiration on where to put my flower clusters. I thought this was a lot of fun and just a little bit different way to use the set to get a different look. So I matted that with a gold mirror cardstock, again, just pulling in those floral elements from the front and then accented the centers of the flowers with opal rhinestones from Spellbinders. I think that this one turned out beautiful and I like the traditional color palette. So for the next card, I kind of piggybacked off of this one and went with the same color palette. I'm gonna use those background colors to color in the florals here on this focal panel. I went ahead and grabbed the panel that I had hot foiled the florals in black and the Be Joyful Sentiment in gold. And I'm adding color using my Copic markers. So I'm just doing those berries, a very simple red. One, I just filled them in with a lighter red, added a little darker red around one side. For the holly leaves, I'm gonna fill those in with a lighter green for the base, and then I'm gonna add a deeper green right in the right at the very bottom where it butts up against those berries, and then I'll just come back in with that lighter green and softly blend that out. Nothing fancy, just a simple two-color blend. For the littler leaves, again, borrowing from what I did on the background of the last card, I filled all of those in with a light aqua color and then just added a little swipe of a lighter green at the very base of those leaves. Matted this on a red piece of cardstock and then adhered that to a panel that I had done the red, the red hot foil onto a red cardstock background. Again, very, very simple card but super beautiful, right? Simple, easy, and beautiful. A couple more of those opal rhinestones, finish this one off, and she's done. So on to the next one. Okay, so for this one, I already had my background and my sentiment created, but I knew I wanted to use that beautiful poinsettia bloom dye included in this collection. Now this one cuts a poinsettia along with some mistletoe and berries. It's a very detailed dye along with a shadow base dye. So once you cut this out, you can put the pieces back together on a base layer. So we're gonna cut this twice, once from mirror gold cardstock. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. And we're gonna pop this out. You can see just how beautiful, how beautiful, dainty, and detailed this is. Use a little bit of care releasing it, but it cuts through nice and clean. And then I'm gonna pop out all of the poinsettia floral pieces here. You can see the flower cuts out and the petals drop out. And that's gonna leave us with the outline of the poinsettia along with the leaves, the berries, and the mistletoe. You can see here how pretty that is. All right, I went ahead and cut it again from red cardstock and I'm gonna push out those petals again because this time we're gonna use the petals to fill in the negative spaces on our gold piece. I can put the rest of the outline there to the side and use it on a different card. Because we don't need it for this one, we're gonna be using the gold outline. All right, so like I said, there's a shadow die here. We're gonna go ahead and cut this from white. This is gonna give us our base to reassemble these pieces back onto. And it's, reassemble sounds like it's gonna be difficult, but it's actually really easy because it's, it's the petals and then the whole rest of the outline. So it's actually quite easy. So you can see here, this will just glue this onto the base and then we can just fit our petals right back into there like a puzzle. So easy. But first, before we do that, I wanna add a little bit of ink blending to this. I've gone ahead and laid down my craft mat. I've grabbed my Bitty Blender brushes from Rabbit Hole and then I'm going to ink blend just a little bit of ink at the base of each of these petals. 
You can use any shade a uh, little bit darker red than the red that you're using. Or if you're using white and you wanna make a white poinsettia, you could add a little bit of a light green or a light yellow here, and that's gonna look beautiful as well. In this case, I'm using some Concord and Ninth Cranberry ink, and I'm just lightly ink blending that at the base of each petal. And then I wanted to deepen it up just a tiny bit more. So I've just grabbed another blender brush here. This one happens to be from Honeybee, and it's the one that I use for black soot distress ink and I'm just going to add a tiny bit of that at the base. This is just the residual ink that's left on the brush. I haven't re-inked it and that worked perfect. All right, so I'll just continue this for the rest of the petals and then it'll be time to assemble it. I've adhered the gold down to the base layer and that leaves me openings to just pop these petals into. I took some liquid adhesive and squeezed it into each of the openings and now I can just use my tweezers to pop each petal into place. And then finish this one off, I used the gold center from the original die cut. I just kept that off to the side and now I will just add that right back into the center there and she'll be done. So now I can just pull from the backgrounds and the sentiments that I've already created to put together a card pretty quickly. I chose the white 3D embossed background here. I've trimmed it down just a bit and now we're going to create a background using this floral. I could make several and kind of layer them on and trim the excess from the edges. But instead what I'm gonna do is I'm going to maximize the use of this one floral here. I'm gonna trim off the excess that's hanging from the edge and then I'm going to bring it back in on the other side of the card. And then to stretch it even further, I'm gonna slide it up just a bit and I'll be able to trim off some of that excess from the top and bring that in at the bottom creating a visual triangle. All right, so I've already trimmed these down and I'm using my liquid adhesive to just adhere these directly to the background. I'm using an acrylic block to hold them in place and provide a little bit of pressure so that the glue has time to adhere. And then all I have to do is add my sentiment. All right, and there we have the finished card. I did add a few white pearls there to emulate the berries for the mistletoe. And I love how elegant and classic and simple this one turned out. Okay, so y'all know I'm all about piggybacking the design. So the last design we had the florals coming in from off the panel to the background. This time I wanted to use that same idea. I wanted to bring the florals off the background into the sentiment panel. So here I've taken one of those foiled panels that I did with just the Be Joyful, and I did that in their opaque, in Spellbinder's opaque white onto the red card stock. And then I layered up two of those outlines of the poinsettia bloom dies, one on top of the other in white. So this gave me, it just gives it a little bit more thickness, a little more heft. And now I'm going to, I'm just kind of figuring out where I can use the bits, pieces, and parts to kind of make it look like there is a floral arrangement coming in off of the edges. And this is a design that I do quite often, um, working from the outside in, and it's just a good way to switch things up. So here you can see, I'm going to use only the solid parts and I'm avoiding any of the areas of the actual poinsettia itself because um, we've dropped out those inner petals. So if I strategically arrange this, I can cut away the empty petal areas and just use the solid portions. Okay, so similar to my first design, I've used that front and center layout. I've matted this on white cardstock and then adhered it to a 3D embossed base here. And again, I added those white pearls from Honeybee Stamps, and I love the way this one turned out. That simple red and white gives me a Nordic vibe, and I'm here for it. But as much as I do love those classic color combos, I am a sucker for an unexpected color combo, especially anything on a black base. The way those colors pop when you put them on the black is just amazing. So for this one, I decided to use my colored pencils to add color because I knew that that would be just about the only medium that I could get to really show up. I like to start by putting down a light layer of white as my base, especially when I'm using darker colors. Lighter colors in colored pencil, you can get away without using the white base because they are light enough or bright enough that they're gonna show up. But if you want the true, true color, put down a layer of white first and then come over that with your colors. Now I did this same method for the rest of the image here on the focal panel, and then I also colored in the entire background using the exact same method. The colors, again, I pulled inspiration from the very first card that we did, the background of that card, 
And unfortunately, I did not film that part. Um, I originally was not going to color the background. I was just going to put this colored panel on top of the uncolored panel. But then I lost my mind and decided that I would try it. And once I started to color it, I fell so hard in love with it that I couldn't stop. And it was one of those that I was... I was watching TV while I was coloring it, and that's a great way to pass time if you're watching your favorite shows, but you want to be productive as well. I do this a lot, especially if it's coloring. Um, so yeah, I don't have the footage on that, but again, exact same technique. Layer of white, and then go in with my colors over that. Okay, so I had created a lot of backgrounds, a lot of focal panels, so let's recap the cards that I made. Some of these will be new. They weren't featured in the footage here, but all of them were made from some of the elements that we made in the footage. So here's our first card, and we went over that one pretty much in depth, as well as this one. Um, loving that tone-on-tone -tone hot foil in the background there. Sets off the white panel with that color beautifully. Little gem accents are perfect, and I used the little speckled dots that are in the foiled image as a reference for where to place some of them. Here's that more Nordic vibe one loving that simple red and white one of my favorite color combos in fact that's how we decorate our outside of our house during christmas red poinsettias and white christmas lights now i used pretty much all the same supplies for all of these cards so i will have everything linked in the description box below if you're looking for anything i will separate out separate it out into featured supplies and then um, other supplies so that it's easy to find the things that we featured here in this video. Now this one we didn't get to look at but oh, this one turned out to be one of my favorites. Actually my son and I made this together. We had some leftover pieces and he started arranging them and um, I was like genius, genius you just gave me an idea. So I really really love the way this one turned out. And then this one was just a nice simple simple foiled background but this is their Spectrum Aura hot foil kind of in love with this foil it gives almost a um, sequin like effect at one angle but then just a flat gold at another angle so it's a beautiful option the interest in the foil itself means you don't have to do much else to the card and here is that finished joyful card with the colored pencil on black man she is a stunner guys it was it was work coloring that background but so worth it and I would do it again. All right, you guys, I wanna thank you guys for hanging in there and sticking around for this video. Make sure if you enjoyed today's video, you do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to check the description box below for any supplies that you might be looking for. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.